Courage to Act Rescue in Denmark tells the extraordinary story of the rescue of the Danish Jews and Jews from Denmark during the Holocaust. The exhibition tells the story of the rescue of the Danish Jews chronologically, so beginning with a contextualizing of the history of the Holocaust to understand really what the stakes are and what made the Danish story so remarkable. After that, we dive into Copenhagen, spring 1942, right at the fish market, which is a central meeting point of Copenhagen. Um, and there we, we meet some of the main characters who we follow throughout the exhibition. Hi, I'm Ari slash Max. Are the German soldiers gone yet? The Nazis are forcing him out of Denmark, and so he's going to Sweden. The fact that he's able to learn about this through the eyes or through the lens of courage. This is made for children nine years old and up and, and you're able to have that experience and have those conversations with your children and in such a safe way, just have this real dialogue about what happened. What it has that not every nonfiction story has is really well documented, real kids. Real people definitely, but even especially kids, which are not always uh, part of the historical record. And now we have kids who are as, as young as six, seven, up to teenagers who lived this experience, each one in a different way. And that really brings a story to life for, for anyone, but especially for kids who see people their own age in history, in these exciting moments, these scary moments, these really dramatic moments in history. Kids meet kids, you know, to meet people their own age, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger, and see the history through, through their eyes. One thing that was really cool and interesting to me was that they like focused in on specific people that helped and how they helped. They were like normal people, like people I would know or people like me. One thing that I hope doesn't happen is parents are like not ready to let their kids know about this. When you design for kids, you're really thinking about all these different learning styles and all these different ways people like to get information. So we're multimedia in the most broad definition of the term, right? We have illustrations, maps, text, media, interviews. Another thing that you do when you're designing for kids is think of, you know, where are they? What will they relate to? What kinds of environments, what kinds of experiences can they relate to? It's great fun to be asked questions like, how would the smell be at the fish market? We don't have smells here but uh, for various reasons, but, it, uh, but how would this fish market smell? Which sounds would be around the person standing in the fish market, working in the fish market? Which, how would that sound be of an environment like this one? Hi, can I help you? Sorry, I just noticed you looking at me and not at all this wonderful fish. <laughs> I feel something like a fish out of water myself here, honestly. Until 1943, October 1943, the Danish government had protected the Jews, had declined every German advance uh, to uh, introduce a persecution of the Jews. But as the government uh, was forced to resign, the ordinary people, the civil society, took over the protection of the Jews. And that happened within the course of hours. And they were very good at getting organized and organizing health networks and also getting into touch with wherever there were Jewish people who had got into hiding themselves. Hi, I'm Charlie Lockwood. I'm playing Eric. There's something that is very important to him and it's very important that he gets the word out. I hope someone can uh, look at my little, my little rectangle in the museum and be like, oh, that's, some, that's the guy that I'd like to be. It's, it's also just very exciting to be a part of a movement of educating people younger, you know, especially with the rise of like anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. I don't think that we should sugarcoat it, but we should definitely make it more digestible for uh, the younger people out there. It was such a great opportunity doing research for this exhibition because it really allowed us to dig deep into the lives of so many ordinary people who took it upon themselves to take part in this mass resistance and help the Jews of Denmark. 
Not only did we have the opportunity to meet and learn about Jews who had been living in Denmark for generations, who never thought their world would change so much um, and that they would have to leave and become refugees, but also ordinary non-Jewish folks who saw an opportunity to rise up and say, not here. This work is an opportunity to tell the stories of people who are no longer here to tell them. In many cases, we're drawing from oral histories uh, from over 25 individuals who experienced the rescue. But in other cases, we tell the stories of people who did not record oral histories. Those stories are just as important, regardless of whether or not we have testimonies. One of the most magical opportunities in this exhibition was to work with our illustrator, Sveta Dorasheva. She's created the most beautiful illustrations to really reveal these moments that we don't have other records of, other than perhaps oral histories or written accounts, and really has brought these stories to life on the walls of our galleries. I'm completely sure that life is way more rich, way more generous and way more imaginative than anything that I could come up with. With the real people was one of the most interesting parts of the project because uh, in order to create their portraits and follow their story throughout the Danish rescue, I not only looked at their archival portraits and every little photograph that was available from the museum and on the net, I also read their stories and their testimonials and their interviews and even books by some of them. My grandpa during the Holocaust escaped from Denmark to Sweden on rowboats and that's when he was about 14 or 15. So many people had different stories and there's so many different stories that kind of connect this big thing that happened and I feel like it's important to see every aspect of each one. The museum is um, bringing this very important piece of our history uh, to the forefront so people can experience it and learn from it. My father, Harold of Kohn, was a Danish Jew living in Copenhagen during the war and he and his family escaped with the help of a fisherman, knowing that you can fight for uh, everyone in your community. Everybody deserves a chance. Very few people seem to know the story. And it is an incredible example of people working together, coming together to literally help their neighbors with a story like this, which has such a positive outcome, we tend to feel that it was inevitable or it was obvious. And the truth is when you begin to listen to the stories, not one of these rescues was inevitable or obvious. When you have the chance to help, you should. And it's important too, no matter what.